Captain Chaudhary. In my today's, that is the second video on tropical revolving storm, I'm going to talk about the structure of the TRS. So, uh, as far as the structure of the TRS is concerned, there are these concentric uh, patterns which are there. So, let's start from the center. Center we have eye, eye of the storm as they say. It's relatively calm with the clear skies on top. Now, uh, what is the reason for that? We will discuss later on. And surrounding the eye, typically from 8 to 16 nautical miles, you know, we have eye wall. Eye wall is the most devastating part of the TRS structure with the winds reaching phenomenal speed, you know. And outside the eye wall, we have the outer zone. Now, eye of the storm, as I said earlier, is associated with clear skies, you know and the weather is relatively calm here the pressure is low you know sea level pressure normally could be like 1000 millibar 1005 millibars which we often record high pressure could be 1020 millibar etc but here in the depression the center you might have typically in a tropical revolving storm you might have a pressure of 960 950 millibar etc and in very severe a uh, tropical cyclone you might get a pressure which is falling to 880-870 millibar uh, also. Now as I told you in the eye wall the winds are very devastating, very strong. Unlike uh, the eye fall, in the eye itself the winds, the horizontal winds are not so strong. And because at the bottom of the eye, vertically if we see at the bottom of eye there is a tendency for the air to go into the wall because in the wall there is deep convection that's happening so a kind of temporary or partial vacuum is created in eye wall at the base level and we have the air sliding out now because of this what happens is the air column in the eye wants to subside you know and this uh, lowering of the air column in the eye wall is associated with compression this is the tendency when the air parcel goes up there is expansion and when the air parcel goes down there is compression and this compression is associated with increase in temperature so typically it is seen that in the eye of the storm the temperature is usually about 5 to 5.5 degrees above the surrounding temperature this air which subsides in the central column that is the eye it tends to get compressed and because of the compression as I said temperature arises compared to the surrounding so there are two three interesting phenomena which are happening here which we must understand the first I've already said the subsiding air compresses and gets heated up right so the temperature in the central col column is maintained higher than the surroundings that's one thing that's happening another thing which is happening is the winds from the eye wall winds from eye wall in a, a, a circulatory pattern you know they tend to come more and more inside towards the low pressure you know influenced by the gradient influenced by the Coriolis force now uh, imagine uh, when the wind comes in the low pressure from high pressure the wind, when the wind comes to low pressure it will uh, naturally uh, expand and that expansion is associated with cooling right that expansion is associated with the cooling. So two things we are saying. One is subsiding air getting warm and other one is encircling air which is coming inside is getting cooler. Now a third phenomenon also we must understand this warm and moist air when it rises it expands. You know it gets cooled and when it gets cooled the capacity of the air parcel to retain moisture reduces. In other words it saturates. Right. So these phenomena, they are all associated with tropical revolving storm. Now the eye wall. Eye wall is associated with the strongest winds and heaviest rainfall. Now as we know the wind blows from high pressure to low pressure and this difference of pressure particularly related to the distance we are talking about is called gradient. Now this gradient force is maximum in the lower areas. So the winds should be maximum in the lower areas. But what happens is very close to the surface because of the friction the winds are not that strong as 
uh, is seen at about 300 meters above the surface where the winds are strongest. Now you'll ask me how the winds are not uh, stronger in a higher altitude. The reason for that is the temperature in the core is warmer. Uh, the temperature in the core is more than the temperature outside and this higher temperature in the core causes the reduction of the pressure process uh, slower compared to outside you know so in the core as you rise the reduction of pressure is smaller because this reduction of pressure in the core is smaller compared to outside the pressure gradient becomes shallower as you go more and more up and that's why the winds are uh, weaker compared to the winds in the uh, position as I told you 300 meters above the water level. Now updrafting takes place in I as well as I wall. Now this updrafting of warm and moist air will be possible if the water is sufficiently warm and there is sufficient depth of the water. Now this updrafting is therefore vital for existence and persistence of tropical revolving storm. Now what happens is when these drafts of air, the convective clouds, when they go up, the circle of this draft tends to increase in diameter. That means it spreads sideways. That means the eye itself will become of bigger diameter as you rise above the surface, right? So at 16 kilometers above the surface of the earth, when the wind is wanting to blow radially outwards, influenced by Coriolis force, it has not the anti-clockwise but clockwise tendency right so you have this anti-cyclone present on top of the eye at about 16 kilometers above the surface of the now outside the eye wall what we have what is typically called today is rain bands rain bands means there is rain of different frequencies from different type of clouds uh, concentric in the concentric circles outside the eye wall in addition to the deep convective cells, there are often secondary cells arranged in bands around the center, spiral into the center of the storm. In some cases, the rain bands are stationary and in certain other cases, they are seen. You must have seen in the cloud pictures, they tend to rotate around the center. So this kind of pictures you must have seen uh, on your TVs, you know, the cloud bands uh, turning in a rotatory pattern. So next time we will see what happens to a TRS when it approaches land. What happens uh, to the TRS when it reaches relatively higher latitude? So it is called extra tropical rather than tropical. What happens? Uh, what are the various reasons associated with the decay of TRS? We will see in my next video.